Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Castle Talk with Sal. Sorry there have been no videos this week. We were in Hoover, Alabama at a convention. If you guys saw Monday, I was able to upload one of the panels. I have three more? Three more coming? Was it four, five, six? Something like that. I got a couple more coming. There's they're gonna three be... more. I don't know what you're Yeah, they, they're, they're going to be sprinkled around uh, throughout the channel. Uh, also, I'm going to be changing the schedule for Thursdays. It's going to be Thursday Theorist, followed by this show, Castle Talk. Just make it a one Stephen King day, because I have plans, I had plans to begin with for Wednesday. So starting Monday, we'll be back on that schedule. Anyways, let's talk about episode four of Castle Rock on Hulu, The Box. Yeah. The very first thing I thought, if you hear dogs bark, and I apologize, um, but... The very first thing I thought when I heard the box was Wendy's Button Box, the uh, the story set in Castle Rock that King wrote with Chismar. So it's up there on the shelf. But um, I had no idea where it was going to end up going, obviously. Uh, looking back hindsight, the box had absolutely... I don't think the box had much to do with the episode at all. I mean, other than the coffin and he was kept in a cage. Is that the box? What was the box? I think it was the coffin and where he was kept. Henry, you know. But that wasn't like the point of the episode, though, was it? I mean... And maybe the prison. Maybe the prison is also the, the box. box. Yeah. Uh, the, thing, the thing that I'm confused about with that whole episode is that there was no cohesion with, like, the story of that episode. Um, that episode no. went some of everywhere and none of it was... Well, I think it went a little bit of everywhere so it could start pulling together everything from like the first episode on. Maybe, no, that episode doesn't stand alone by itself. No. no you would have well, to actually watch too. the other episodes to, to get it, yeah. which I, I kind of respect that. At least now they're giving us something to chew on and actually something talk extra. about. Yeah. Um, one thing that I will make note of is I read an article from, I think, Dread Central or Bloody Disgusting, one of those places, um, that said, actually, I, I just read the title. I didn't actually click through because I don't like either one of those sites. But um, it said Castle Rock to be an anthology series like American Horror Story. Um, so basically it's going to be standalone series for each and every, you know, each and every season is going to have a standalone series. Um, it opened up very well. Uh, the, the episode did, with the Tom Waits song, Clap Hands, with Selinski going in. Um, it's funny because I made note uh, that that Selinski was, in, un, I, I thought, unintentionally creepy. Uh, this is uh, Dennis, right? Dennis Selinski, is that his first so, name? Yeah. The, when Henry's on the phone, he calls him Dennis. But, uh, <clears throat> again, spoilers. <laughs> Run away if you haven't oh, seen this one. spoilers. Because the end of this episode was a trip. Yes, it was. Um, I know. There is a running theme, once again, like I've brought up in my Stephen King theories videos, um, about psychics in, in Maine. Um, it seemed like everybody has some kind of second sight, vision, whatever. You got, <clears throat> excuse me, you got Henry Beaver, um, you got yeah. Molly. Who knew home dude was seeing stuff? Yeah, yeah. What? Molly, well I think his was actually just dreams. He, he was just having dreams, flashbacks but, of I what... Mean, still though, <coughs> that, uh, for me Sorry, that one chill. counts. Let me let me let me drink some water. <laughs> Keep the folks entertained. Making us wait on him. Sorry, mm -hmm. I got choked up. Got Anyways, choked up thinking about I the end of the episode. I think the whole thing with Henry counts as part of this whole psychic thing, or you know, special abilities yeah. wise. Um, couple things I want to make note of. Molly Strand lives in Frank Dodd's house. So the the. A uh, serial killer from the Dead Zone, she lives in Home Dude's house. Why did she tell the couple that was there to see the house, y'all? What in the world? I'm talking about uh, Lacey killing himself. Uh, yeah, but, well, technically she was right. She didn't have to tell him because he didn't die <laughs> no, in the house. No, I'm not talking about I, that, just that, though. She told them where she lived, though. Talking about that? Oh, yeah. Why did he know that? Um, they don't need to know any of that. What in She's the world? super awkward. And I, I like her character. Um, I don't remember this. I, I'd have to read. It's been a while since I reread Needful Things. It's been a while since I watched the movie. Was Polly Chalmers a real estate agent? I'm pretty sure she was. Holler at me down in the doobly doo if I'm wrong. Um, there was a sign for the house on Maple Street. 
And I'm pretty sure if we reach back here, smile at the people while I, while I, mm -hmm. yeah. Hey y'all. Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Mm -hmm. uh, let me, I just need to look in here to see what, yeah, the house on Maple Street. There's a Maple Street, this is Nightmares and Dreamscapes, there's a short story in here called The House on Maple Street. And if you haven't read it, very quick spoilers, time. spoilers, <laughs> spoilers, the house literally lifts off into the air like it's a spaceship. Um, but... And there was a very, very, very brief glimpse of that when Henry turns right. He's anyway. I don't have to show you, but he turns onto a street called Maple Street, and it just it yeah. Just they, they show you the the street sign for a split few seconds. Ma Maple Street. No, I I caught that. I be I be I be on it. I be on it. Had the big kid shook too. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> another huge one is Desjardins. That was creepy as, sh you know, <laughs> that was creepy. Yeah. Uh, when he's talking to him, when he leans in and home dude says, I never touched you with that smile on his face. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you stay yes. over there. Yeah. Yes. And how am I supposed to believe that when you were this close to yeah. me? <laughs> mm -mm. That ain't going down. <laughs> Couple things with the Disjardins. Vince Disjardin was one of Ace's crew in The Body or Stand By Me, if you know it by the movie Thank adaptation. You. Yes. Thank you. Um, but uh, so he's a he's a part of actually his brother whoever uh, right. Joseph Joseph yes, that Um I only remember that is because when he was talking to Pangborn about Henry um, killing his father, mm -hmm. and I I remember him specifically the way he said Joseph was kind of weird to me. Um, the way Pangborn did almost like he had a bad taste in his mouth. Like, oh yeah, Joseph. Yeah. <clears throat> but everything this Pangborn says seems like um, he's. He's got a bad taste in his mouth. This Pangborn is an ass. Um, he, I still like him though because even after, even after the argument with Henry, he still goes and talks to Henry's mom, and says, you know, maybe going down there. And then she, she wild out, wilds out on him with the, the uh, with, with Henry with the knife. Yeah. I ain't going anywhere unless I leave in a box. That was pretty cool. Oh, damn. Yeah. Um, we never had this conversation. Yeah. Uh, so going back over this one one more time, the the place feels Castle Rock feels a lot more like Derry than it does like Castle Rock. Um, there were problems in Castle Rock, but it didn't. I don't know that it ever felt like a cursed town. There is little bits and pieces um, in. I think it's not it's not Cujo, but it's the dead zone where um, what's his name? Uh, well, just the narrator talks about you know having a serial killer and a killer dog in the same town um, together. That was kind of, or was it? Yeah, it was. It was at the beginning of Cujo. He's talking about Dodd, the the monster of the town. Um, let's see here. This episode's soundtrack was on point. Um, it's straight out of a Stephen King book. The the, the Tom Waits, the uh, this what what was the name of the song that came on toward the end of the episode while he shoot? We'll get to that the shootout. Mm, yeah. I can't man. remember. It's the old almost doo wop song. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Over you. But was that it? I think that was it. If that wasn't it, leave the name of the song down there and doobly do. <clears throat> and uh <laughs> Okay, so we gotta talk of course we gotta talk about Selinsky shooting up the prison. Um that I've was, said spoilers I don't know how many times. That was amazing. That was the best scene in the entire show, but yes, once but again we got like psychic imagery in the first episode of all the and I knew as soon as he pulled out his gun and walked out that I was like that's the, this is where the scene comes into play from the end of the first episode. So they've tied it all together. My problem is, it felt like a season finale. It yeah, felt it like the end of a season, where, where the end of a story. Where could they possibly go from here? It felt like the end of Selinsky's story and maybe the beginning of a different story with Henry. And how but that would feel like, if we were to watch that in the next episode, episode 5... That would feel like the beginning of a new season. Yeah. Um, Why would you do that, like, halfway through? Th this, is, this is a good point, um, and I agree with you completely. The, the thing that it, it... Now, Henry has lost his man inside. Um, he has no idea. Nick is still in the cage. Nicholas Cage still makes me chuckle every time <laughs> I think about it. Yeah. Um, but, so now he, he's lost his man inside. Dennis... But the best part of the whole shootout for me... Was home dude walking after he plugs him and he walks in on Henry. He looks at Henry and says, "I want to testify." Okay. And I'm like, yes. I just like, okay, <laughs> he's gone. He's the, but you see it come over him right then when he clicks from 
crazy person back to normal, I guess yeah. you want to say. And what does that do to Henry and maybe his mindset with his relationship to the town? Because he's going to leave. Yeah, they, don't, leave. Uh, they already don't like him. He's got mommy issues now. He's still trying to discover what the heck happened when he was a kid. Does did, he did he really kill his dad? Yeah. Or when see when I want to interject, throw this in there because Go you ahead. made me think of it. When when Pangborn tells Henry, he said Henry did it. Yeah. We don't know what Henry did. Exactly. What I, did he do? Yeah. What? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I maybe mean, we, we don't we know. We already know that Molly off Daddy. Right. So. Did Pangborn ask what? Dad like who did it just before he died, and he said Henry did it, or was there just a random? just out of place Henry did it kind of thing right. that that does has not because as a writer I know that's the kind of red herring you want to throw out make people think and even Henry's believing it at this point he's like you know comes up and of course he got busy with Molly if you didn't see that coming you, you, you maybe he gets you the Stevie truth wonder. from Molly maybe they get to some conversation going and she tells him a little something more I don't know I'm I'm grasping yeah. but but Molly, Molly crazy. reminds me a lot of Polly Chalmers, and probably because it's Castle Rock, probably because she's got that necklace that uh, that Polly coveted. Molly, Polly, I mean, come on, there's, <laughs> there's just yeah. so much that we can ignore. I know, I know, Stephen King came out on Twitter and said, "Forget the Easter eggs and just enjoy the show." But for me, the best part of the show right now are the Easter eggs because the story is all over the place. Will they bring it together? I don't know. If these writers are that talented, we won't know until the end of it. There are some people, and this episode really polarized people. I got comments like, if you didn't like that one, you're going to hate this one. If you, <laughs> This is the best episode yet. It just keeps getting better. It just keeps getting worse. You guys are on both sides of the fence and ain't nobody in the middle. So <laughs> it's either you like it at this point or you don't. I think I'm kind of with, I like it, but there is the caveat that it's... It hasn't gone anywhere, and now we have almost an end, yeah. uh, almost a season finale. Yeah, I, I feel like they actually just kind of killed off the show at the moment. Like, at okay, the, yeah. we're done. Like, wait, you don't have my episode? It's also a lot of storytelling uh, significance in that killing off a big character like Dennis in the, almost the middle of a season, and how shaken up you can make your audience with that. But I think that's everything for right now. You got anything, any closing arguments? Uh, <laughs> no, no, we're good. We're good. Yeah. All right, so until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been Castle Talk with... Shell. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>